Take and TalkPicks.com. I'm Rob Kruger, and this is episode 78 with our Fundamental Fridays. So today on TakeAndTalkPicks.com, I'm talking about white balance. I mean, we've been talking about how to get our exposure, how to compose a shot. Well, let's get into the finer details of exposure, and you can customize your white balance or use the different pre-settings that are on the camera to dial in a little bit better. Now there are a lot of people out there who will tell you use auto white balance all the time and then fix it in post. It's not a bad idea. I mean you can use auto white balance most of the time. It's usually going to get you pretty darn close and then you'll fix it later. I'm not going to lie, I use it a lot. But there are certain occasions where I want to dial in my white balance a little bit closer so I don't have to deal with those funky mixed light situations or the really extreme warm lights at night out in the street parking lot or something. You know, I don't want to deal with these issues in post-production because you can kind of lose detail by having such a color shift. So, to make up for that, there are a few different tools. One, the settings in your camera offer different types of white balance options. And a lot of cameras will have uh, the main ones of auto and uh, tungsten or incandescent, fluorescent, daylight, flash, cloudy, shade, uh, doing a Kelvin temperature, which is the color temperature of light and you can dial in a little bit finer that way or you can do a custom white balance and with a custom white balance you can actually select an image that you'd be balancing the light off of but you got to know what your camera's looking for because balancing off of an image can really shift things uh, with Canon you have to actually photograph something and then select the image with Nikon you can be prepared to take that shot photograph it but it won't record an image it will record the white balance data and there are a few tools that I have with me right now that would really do the job. One, a little bit more old school, this little piece of cardboard, but it's very specific. It's 18% gray or numerically in our digital scale of 256 from 0 to 255, we're looking at 128 RGB. It's middle gray, right down the middle. And when you're looking for middle gray in the world out there, not easy to find. It probably doesn't really exist in many places. So we have a card that we can bring it with us and now we're under a certain lighting condition we can balance off of that card because this is what our camera wants the meter is always telling you I will give you this unless you tell it something different like exposure compensation or knowing the difference between exposure in certain lighting situations and if you go to takingtalkpicks.com starting next week so Monday wait for the weekend starting Monday you can get a free PDF download on my zone system digital version for exposure metering in the field and making really well exposed images knowing the detail that you need from three easy steps so go over to takingtalkpicks.com and download that starting Monday alright so the gray card I'm just gonna throw it on the ground and take a quick shot here meter up on it as far as what we have for lighting and I'm not getting full stops reading but we'll give you the right reading here I'm getting 160th of a second f4 and 800 ISO now I can do a bunch of different things to change that up open up to 2.8 and go down to 400 ISO I mean you can do the equivalent exposure but for this lighting situation it's saying this is the correct light well we have this really I'm in the shade here evening hours and it's kinda of getting a little bit even so we have this really boring light and that's okay for our purpose today but what we have going on is correct exposure just taking a quick shot off in the distance here at nothing and it looks correct. I mean, it's just blah, boring trees, dark, yay. But it doesn't matter. Uh, but I don't want that every time. That's not what I'm going for. I mean, if I photograph somebody out here, it's dialed in. It's going to be right. So that's great for the exposure. What about the white balance? How do I use this? So this is reflecting the light at the perfect metering, or at least what the camera will tell you is the perfect metering. And now we can dial in our white balance. So let me do this. I'm going to take a custom white balance here and I'm going to preset it here and I'm going to photograph just the gray filling the frame and with filling the frame you want to go in manual focus because it will try to focus on it. there's no texture Ooh, it says it's good alright and then Nikon will just tell you good or not good and you gotta try it again and it's reflective so for everything in this scene that is going to be perfectly white balanced let's have a look here with a shot happening here. I'll bring back that focus, the autofocus, and I'm just going to grab these trees, this whole setup here. 
Wonderful. Technically, it's right. Uh, you can see a little bit higher in the image here that it's a little bit warmer because we have more sun from up there than down here. So if I actually zoom in down to this really even shade area that we are at, now we got correct white balance. Really nice, saturated, rich green. And it makes sense for our white balance. What if we don't have a gray card? What if it's too much to carry a big card around with us? Well, pop off your hood and grab one of these. An Expo Disc or Expo Cap is another brand. That's what I have here. I think the only reason I chose it is because six years ago when I wanted to pick one up, it was a little cheaper. So it does the same thing as a gray card, but now it's filling the frame with this white. All right, it's not gray, so what does that mean? Well, remember, the camera wants that medium gray. So it's going to give you an exposure that will match that becoming the medium gray. So dial in your exposure. And what you want to do is point at the light source. So even though it's pretty even here, our light source is still beyond the houses over here in this direction. So I'm going to meter up over there, see what this thing wants. And the light hasn't changed based on what I did reflective with the gray card. Still 160th of a second, F4 at 800 ISO. And I'm going to just quick take a shot here with the thing on here. Yeah, it's creating a vignette, but ooh, look at that, a beautiful little gray. Useless, right? I'm going to switch my auto or white balance to auto and just see what it does. It's not a big deal here. Now I'm going to bring it back to that pre here, predetermined or calibrating it, and say, all right, to the light source. It's good. All right. It's really easy to make it good if you know what you're doing. If you're going reflective or the scene you're going to photograph with the Expo Disc, it's going to come up bad because that light is traveling a little bit further for the correct exposure there. When it's based off of the actual scene being a gray card, you'll do just fine. So remember, gray card, right at it where your subject will be, Expo Cap or Expo Disc, from where your subject is to the light source. All right, so those are the big differences between the two, but you can do the same thing. And let me see here. Do we have pretty much the same exposure as that last one? Looks good to me exposure-wise, and that rich saturated green, I think they both work. And really, there's no problem in how you go about doing it. Try playing around with it. Sometimes when you're inside, you'll have those incandescent lights and those warmer tones, or we have a lot of LED lighting and fluorescent, which is kind of a green color. You know, set up for the indoor light and point them where there's a window behind with that outside light coming in. It's gonna shift things in a weird way, but it can get really interesting. The biggest problem with white balance is mixing your light. It's horrible. So. Let's bring that camera on over here this way. All right, so here we are. We got this uh, mixed light situation. We got this uh, sunlight, well, kind of low in the sky, peeking over here, giving us a little bit of this even light back here. And I have actually LED lights in a little strip light system here that I've designed and made. It doesn't look great, but it's awesome because it runs on double A's and it works for hours. It's great. So we have this mixed light. And let me just try a couple things here. One. I'm going to use that custom white balance that I have for this lighting situation and kind of dial in the exposure because it's changed a little bit as it's getting darker here and photograph this plant right here. Here we go. Beautiful. All right. So it's nice and even. We got something happening there. Then you can see, you know, just a simple little curve of the stem coming up and these little flowers on top and that rule of thirds marker intersection there. Yeah, it's okay. We need some light that's going to be, you know, coming from some direction. So that's what I love about this little light stick here, is I can bring that in and hopefully hold everything I need <laughs> and do this. Here we go. So, same kind of shot here. It's a little different, but pretty close. Well, we're bringing a lot of light, so what does that mean? It's brighter. So let's cut that down a little bit. As far as our shutter speed will go, I'll take that down a notch. See what happens. Ooh, it's got a funky color, right? Well, I didn't change the white balance at all. So it makes sense that if I bring a new color into it, it's going to shift it in a weird way. So let me switch just to auto white balance and see what we get there. See what kind of corrections the camera will make on its own. Here we go. Ah, looks pretty good. It's a little bland. <laughs> well, that's always fun. <laughs> Duck attack. All right. <laughs> Pretty sweet. It's always exciting here taking talk pics. All right, cool. So we got that mixed light happening. The auto took care of it best it could. But what I'm going to do 
is remake my white balance and uh, reset that real quick. But oops, let me grab my gray card again. Cool, so I got the gray card here. Here we go, I'm just going to try to get all my hands. You know what, it's not too much different from up here to down here, so I'm just gonna lean that in, kind of have my light where it's supposed to be, set my focus to manual, and get prepared for a custom white balance. Here we go. It's saying it's good. Let's see if it's right. Don't need the gray card in there. Here we go. So the exposure's good here. We have that mix light happening. The custom white balance and see what we get. Ooh, I think that's much better. What are the odds, you know? Using these tools to our advantage. So we have that first one where we just went with the predetermined white balance under the even light. That's kind of working. Then we added the mix light. It's kind of weird looking. A little bit too fluorescent, right? We went with the auto and I think it cools it down a little too much, kind of compensating for that warm feel we have in the mixed light. And then we balance for everything. And when you really take the time to do that, killer image. It's not even of a great subject, but it's a killer image white balance wise, right? So, you know, play with it. Grab a gray card, get an expo cap, you know, try just the different settings on your camera and you're going to have fun. Again, go to takingtalkpicks.com starting Monday and download the free PDF on my expanded view of how to expose in the field without these devices and still have good white balance and good exposure. I'm Rob Kruger, takingtalkpicks.com. Happy shooting.